Hey everyone, wanted to show you what I look like. So I went through and I recorded all the videos for this week in one big old swoop and it was 80 minutes long. So it was a huge chunk of time. I'm faster when I'm talking to a screen than I am when I talk to a group of people, but it's, you know, a week's worth of stuff. And I was recording on my iPad as well as here using photo booth on my Mac and I wasn't totally paying attention and I let the screen like fade out twice on my Mac and I forgot that when that happens basically it shuts down its ability to maintain the recording so when you watch or listen to the video and watch it because you'll see me writing and stuff like that and highlighting I was my intention was to show you this coupled with what you see there. And it's like, ooh, look, there's like dynamics and all that stuff. Yeah, it, it's not going to show up for this week because I don't want to re-record it. So I apologize for that. Next week it will be better, but I'm putting this in front of each of the low videos so you can see that I'm a real person. See you on Tuesday. Hey, everyone. Welcome to bio 20 so this is introduction to biology so this will be like where i'll be filming everything so this is my office at home um i have a lot of books i have a lot of disney how nightmare before christmas junk um what I've done is each week I'll have the video or have all of the PowerPoints set up in one big old massive PowerPoint. Then I'm going to break it up into little individual pieces. So because there's supposed to be two lectures during the week, there'll be a part one and a part two. And then each of those I'm going to break down into little individual topics. That way, you know, if you don't want to sit there and listen to, you know, the entire topic all at once, you can break it up into like two or three chunks if that's what you wish. So part one is going to be the introduction to the class, so orientation. So my name's Eric Brothwell. Um, I'm not a doctor, but you can call me Professor Brothwell. You can call me Mr. Brothwell. You can call me Eric. I'm not going to get offended by whatever you wish to call me. I did teach high school for 14 years before I just got sick of how the bureaucracy worked. And then I stopped and I went back and got my master's in... Oh, I didn't say what my master's are in. So I have a master's in science education. And I also have one in biology. So I quit and then I got the second one in biology so I could then teach college because the politics are not as great there. Um, in terms of people I might reference, my wife is a high school English teacher. Last semester I actually had students who had her is in high school so that was entertaining i also have a nine-year-old soon to be ten-year-old um oh there are my two degrees this is not the only school i teach at i'm also teaching at cypress college i currently teach ecology and physiology there but i've also taught just human and human physiology i also teach at long beach state where I'm going to be teaching genetics this semester. I've taught it a few times before. I have taught biostats before. I've taught lab for intro and cell molecular, which is kind of like the majors version of this class. And this semester I'm also teaching the upper division version of this class. So if we need to get a hold and speak to each other, um, you can message me through Canvas. For the most part, I get told that the emails are coming through. So I can check it. I'm addicted to my cell phone far more than I should be. So I will probably get back to you relatively quickly. Um, in terms of student hours, what I'm thinking is I'm going to have a Zoom on Wednesday mornings. That will most likely be something like... 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, I'll post something in Canvas for you, but it'll just be on Zoom, so you can drop on by, ask your questions, what have you. Obviously, 
that'll just be when I know I'm just sitting there available. I'll be in my office at Long Beach. But you can email me whenever you want. So email or use Canvas. If you do send me an email, please tell me Bio20 because I have all my emails that come into one filter on Outlook. And I want, it helps if I could say, like, oh, Bio20, okay, switch brain, go into Saddleback mode. Um, and obviously during lab, you could ask questions too. So it's not like, uh oh, lab, you're you're restricted to when you could ask me questions. You know, whatever. Uh, during the weekends, I will um, try to be school free, even though I'm going to be making all this stuff for you on weekends. Uh, I will do my best to get back to you. So if I can on the weekends, I will. I just don't want you to think that, oh, you can't. It's just, I might be slower on the weekends. If I don't respond to you, um, and it's something that requires a response, please be persistent, because sometimes I am guilty of... It's kind of like when you get a text message and you read, and you're like, oh, I'll reply to that later, and later is you forgot for later. So, you know, just remind me. I won't be offended. This is my schedule for the week, so you can see how uh, crazy it is. So, like, Monday I only teach one class, and it's at Long Beach, same thing with Wednesday. Here's where I'm thinking I'm going to do my, my office hours. Oh, I put uh, 8.30 to 9.30. Oh, whatever, 9 to 10, something like that. Um, Tuesdays, which is the day I'm going to actually see you in person... Uh, is actually my craziest day, so I won't get there right before. Oh, I'll be basically showing up right before class, and then I have to immediately leave after, because I have a lecture at Cyprus at three forty-five. So if lab goes till two fifty, I'm gonna be panicking. So we're gonna want to be Johnny on the spot during lab time. Everything else, you know, we have all the time in the world, but you could see how crazy my week is. I know you all probably have equally crazy weeks. So in terms of how this course is going to work, lecture is going to be worth about 60% of your grade and lab is going to be 40% of your grade. So what are we going to do during the lecture time? So which is the asynchronous part? So we'll have one final will be 10% of your grade. That'll be, you know, during finals week. Every two weeks or so, we're going to have a quiz. So uh, next week will be our first quiz. There'll be primarily short answer, multiple choice. You'll see how I organize things where I tell you, hey, these are the topics that I'll put on to quizzes. It'll be like five questions, something like that. Um, we'll also do some in-class activities. I know we're not actually in person, so you'll be assigned uh, your lab group to work with. And it might be, oh, yeah, create some document, and you'll figure out how to chat with each other online to figure that out or it'll be a discussion board or you'll you know you'll make something and post it or you'll answer a worksheet then post it something along those lines but there'll be some type of engagement outside of just yeah listen to my videos at five times speed during lab uh each week we're gonna have some type of lab report that's gonna be due they'll be due saturdays online so you always have till the end of the week for the most part everything's gonna be due the end of the week and then Sunday will be for the new week. We'll also have lab quizzes every single week. There'll be five questions. I'll ask you about the lab that you're going to be doing that day. So did you look ahead to what's going on in the lab? And I'll ask you about the previous lab. If you are absent, you still are held responsible. So, you know, do as you uh, will. There'll also be a lab final that covers all the labs. <clears throat> All this is basically customary for everyone who teaches Bio 20. The one exception is I give quizzes as opposed to everyone else who gives big tests. I just break it up into smaller chunks. It, it's basically the same. So this class is strange because we have a whole bunch of different types of people in here, and I'll address that in a moment. But um, studying is one of the things that you we probably should briefly address. Um, cramming is not necessarily the best for you. And, you know, we can actually demonstrate this rather easily. I can give you a phrase, 
and see, you know, could you remember it or, you know, memorize it, you know, by cramming in your head and hearing it a whole bunch of times and then me asking you about it in a certain way. And you realize for regurgitation type questions, yeah, you might be able to pull that off if you have a particularly good memory. But if I'm asking you to draw me a figure or, hey, here's something that happened, could you explain it to me? Well, cramming doesn't work for those types of things. And um, the reason why is studying takes time. And the thing about studying is it's very much like math. So the, my math story is pretty simple. And that is, haven't you ever taken or you've been doing your math homework and you realize that, oh, you come across that one question, you have no clue how to answer the question. And you've tried it, you try it, you try it, you look in the back of the book, you see what the answer is, but you can't figure out how to get there. And you get annoyed and then you start Googling it and you can't find the exact question. So you're like, ah, this sucks. So then you wait and you blow it off. And then right before you have to turn in your math homework, you look at it again, you say, oh, wait a second. Ba, 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 ba. And boom, you figure out how to do the question. Like, I think we've all had some type of situation like that. It doesn't have to be with math, but where you have a problem and you just can't solve it. And then it dawns on you, oh, wait, oh, this is easy. And then you solve it. The reason why it suddenly became easy is just because you are not trying to actively solve it doesn't mean your brain gives up. What you have to do when you study is you have to put yourself into that type of stressful situation, which sucks. But you have to make it so you are trying to solve a puzzle that you cannot understand. And if you do that, and you have to struggle, and you have to give yourself time to process it, what you'll realize is you will eventually make sense of it because you're struggling to make sense. But that takes time. This class is very much going to be that way, as is most college classes, where if you give yourself the time to struggle, it will make sense. And sometimes you might have to go and double check and re-listen to things, or go read something, or go hear someone else's take, or ask questions. But if you give yourself the time, you can do it. All of this is doable. Um... So what will be helpful is if you were to try and do little bits every single day, challenge yourself, try and explain things, draw pictures if you can. Don't regurgitate what I'm going to be showing you and what I'm going to be telling you. See if you can put your own spin on it or give it a twist or try and explain things backwards or whatever. Explain it to, you know, your action figures here. Uh, here's one of my action figures. So, you know talk to something. I'm talking to a screen. Um, I will tell you what I want you to know, so it's not going to be a total guessing game on your part, but you need to give yourself the struggle. It's why I'm also making the videos in small chunks, or I'm hoping small chunks, so that, you know, you can move at your own pace and you can, you know, re-watch certain videos if you need to. Um, again, with that whole let's think about studying, if you are confused about things, because I'm sure I, in my mind, I'm being flawless, and that's most likely not true, um, you know, student hours, email me, YouTube is helpful, we do have a textbook for this course, um, oh, I didn't have it linked, it's in the syllabus, which is on Canvas, what I'll also do is I'll post a link to it online, it, it's a free textbook, it's actually halfway decent, there's some errors in it, but most things have that. Uh, you could use the LRC library. Um, reach out, get help. Don't wait to the last second or say, eh, I'm just not going to get it. Many of you are taking this course because you want to become nurses or do something in allied health, which means this stuff is going to show up again, especially if you take microbiology or you take anatomy or you take physiology. This stuff does show up again. So don't put yourself in a situation where like, eh, I'll blow it off. Like, don't, don't do that to yourself. Life does happen. Um, we do have student services. You can access all of this online. I think I have a slide that shows you that. Um, the health center is really good if you have mental health issues. I go to therapy. Everyone should go to therapy. Um, it happens. I'm not in the business of saying, oh, I think that's a legit reason for you to be gone or 
you know, legit reason to need an extension. I'm going to hear what you have to say and be like, oh, okay, yeah, life happens. But you need to communicate with me. We can work together if you communicate. If you don't, I'm just left in the dark. If you go to Canvas, uh, you'll see down at, towards the bottom there'll be something that says Student Support. And these are all sorts of options for you. They are part of what you pay for in your um, fees just to be at Salvac. So make use of it if you need it in particular. Also, for those of you who um, have, how to say this, need special services when it comes to, like, you need testing extensions and stuff like that, you need, and you do, and this is like your first time being at community college, you do need to sign up with disability services. Not that it's necessarily disabled, but it's the name of the center. You do need to talk to them. We will work through whatever we need to, but you need to go and talk to them first. Don't wait till after the fact. Go to them. So that's the end of part uh, one, the first topic. Uh, what we'll then talk about is why should you care about this class?